This video discusses forecasting unlevered net income for a project. We're going to do it by way of an example. The example is a Cisco project to develop and sell new smart routers called HomeNet routers. They've just conducted a $300,000 feasibility study and this study estimates that we can sell 100,000 units at $260 per unit each year. So this would give us revenues of, we'll do this in thousands, $260 per unit, 100,000 units, that's $2.6 million in revenue per year. It will involve $2.8 million in direct support expenses. Now, if these are truly general expenses, that do not change as a result of the project, we shouldn't count them. These are the direct product support expenses for this project. In addition, the production cost per unit for the goods sold is $110, 100,000 units, $1.1 million. Research and developing expenses to bring this product to market, developing the actual box and the systems within it, can be expensed immediately. New production equipment actually has to be capitalized. For the capitalized expenses, we're going to write them off on a straight line depreciation schedule over five years. In addition, we're going to house this in an existing laboratory. Now there's three things about this that are important beyond the simple revenues and costs. One of them is that we're going to look at incremental cash flows for a decision. That is cash flows that change as a result of the decision. Whether they decide to do the home net project or not, they will have spent the $300 for the feasibility study. That's a sunk cost. It's irrelevant to the decision moving forward. It's not included in the cash flows. Second, in terms of housing the existing lab, if they could have leased that space out, they'll have foregone rent. If they choose to do the project or not, it will change the amount of rent they receive on this space. So that's going to create an opportunity cost that's not directly incorporated in the initial cash flows. Finally, beyond the simple sales and revenue of this particular router, this router may cannibalize, reduce the sales of existing routers by Cisco. We'll need to capture that in the cash flows as well. So we'll do two cuts at cash flows. The first one is simply the incremental cash flows resulting from this project then we'll incorporate into that the foregone rent and the cannibalization effects. So the first cut, the sales we just calculated, $2.6 million, $260 in revenue, 100,000 units. The cost we just calculated, $110 in cost, 100,000 units. And this is the SG&A that's fixed for the life of this project. And again, this is the direct SG&A, nothing that is truly general and fixed goes in here. These are the product supports for this particular project. And depreciation, $1.5 million. Okay. There are three different calculations in here. The first one is the initial expense of R&D we assume that any expenses we have for a project can be written off against other income at the company. That means this lowers our earning before interest in taxes by $15 million and saves us $6 million in taxes. So this is the tax write-off we get from having expensed the $15 million 
in R&D expenses. The $10.7 million is the earnings before interest and taxes in a usual year. It's the revenue minus costs of goods sold minus direct SG&A expenses minus depreciation here taxes and unlevered net income is a final result it's earnings before interest and taxes minus taxes And in the last year, we cease operations. No revenues, no expenses, but we still have a year's worth of depreciation we can write off against other income. So the taxes are $600 in savings. And the unlevered net income is a $1,500 write off. $600 in tax savings, so a negative $900. Now, a lot of people like to do that on a spreadsheet. A lot of people like to do this directly. The direct formula is sales minus costs. Now, costs for many companies, according to GAAP, will include the depreciation associated with the project, but if not, you have to subtract off the depreciation separately, subtract cash, I'm sorry, subtract taxes, and you have unlevered net income. So in this case it's 2.26 million minus 11 million in cost of goods sold minus 2.8 million in SG&A expenses minus 7 I'm sorry 1.5 million in depreciation tax rates 40 percent. If you do this direct calculation, you get 6420000000 as well. But as I said before, that's not all of the cash flows associated with this project. Another cash flow we have is we forego renting out the space that we're using for production. If we could have rented it out at $200,000 per year, then we forego, we have an opportunity cost as a result of this project of $200,000. And we have cannibalization. If a quarter of our sales come from people that would have bought our existing routers anyway, then a quarter of the 100,000 routers, we forego the revenue of an existing router, in this case assumed to be $100 per router, but we also forego the production cost of that router, $60 per router. So to incorporate the loss of sales, what we're going to do is we're going to compute how many sales we think we will lose as a percentage of the sales of the new product. This is called the percent of sales method. It's a very common means of forecasting income statement and balance sheet items for a project going forward as a percentage of the overall projected sales. So in this case, we forego, so it's going to be a negative cash flow, sales of equal to 25% of the 100,000 new routers that we think will sell come from our customers that would have bought an old router anyway so we forego we give up $100 on each of those customers so we forego sales of existing routers to the tune of two and a half million dollars now this is a loss to us because this is revenue we would have gotten that we do not get because of cannibalization here. But then again, we also forego having to pay on those 25,000 routers a $60 cost of goods sold. Multiplying that out gives you $1.5 million. That is cost savings, so it's a positive cash flow. Finally, we could have rented out the existing space for 
for two hundred thousand dollars so by using that space in the production process we forgo earning two hundred thousand dollars in SG&A revenue so if we adjust our cash flows for that it's the old sales and I'll put it down here it's the twenty six million in new sales minus the cannibalization rate 25 percent of those sales we give up a hundred dollars per unit so 23500 but we also save in costs so our cost of goods sold is the old cost of goods sold minus the savings we get from the cannibalization our SG&A we'll put that down as revenue cogs our SG&A is the old SG&A plus we forgo rent up to the tune of two hundred thousand dollars so our SG&A including the foregone rents three million the rest of it is the same then for every year we calculate the new unlevered net income according to the same formulas before so for example in year one you unlevered net income is equal to the revenue accounting for cannibalization minus cost of goods sold accounting for cannibalization which reduces costs minus SG&A expenses which is increased because of the foregone rent minus depreciation which hasn't changed taxes which haven't changed calculate that out you get to 5700 so that's the incremental unlevered net income the reason we call it unlevered net income is noticed interest expense and therefore the source of funds and the cost of funds and the tax write-off based on the funds is not in this number 